I always wonder about that when actors die in films. Do they want a cool death? Does it matter how your character dies? God, no, as long as they send the check, man. <laughs> yeah, you kidding? As long as the check doesn't bounce, uh, you're fine. Define story. Can you define that word? What is story in a film? It's a joke well told. It's uh, lyrics in a song. It's poetry. Were you worried about the story of this? Is this too democratic a story? I didn't, see, I didn't see much story in it. Mm. When I got the script for Alien, it just didn't have that appeal to me until I knew who was going to direct it. Well, he really elevated this experience yeah. for you, didn't, didn't and it? Two, they said two million dollars, which I said, oh, this is, they don't even know who the director is. I, I just don't have an interest in being involved in this bit because it would be a piece of crap. Yeah. Say two million dollars. Ten or twelve million, whatever it was budgeted at, finally, was ready directing. It just takes on a whole different. I mean, the, the shade goes up in the window, and you got this gorgeous view at that point. So and you can really I trust from the, the, the creation of the director. Oh, God, yes. Their manner. Oh, God, yes. But if they're complete bastard to you, that still is subservient to the I've fact. I've never had that. The only time I've had anything where the director was off was uh, two guys who were very intellectual and I just got I, I it's sort of being intellectual about a creative uh, discipline is like it's it, there's an animal instinct that says this guy's a coward mm. he doesn't have any courage it's all in his head he d won't take the risk of possibilities which is what's missing in Hollywood but anyway it's another story but I have, t in these, both these cases, I was just, in, I, I just wanted to shake them. Mm. And it wasn't that they were not treating me well, they just didn't know how to deal with me. Mm -hmm. Or the other actors that, was, that were involved. And I just felt that this was not going to be a very good film. And that's, that's tough when you know that. And when you're halfway through a film and you know it's just, the guy doesn't see it. He doesn't look through the lens of the camera. It's a whole world through that camera. Yeah. Ridley has an interesting kind of, say, bedside manner. Um, he once said, I either ignore or goad an actor. Uh, I don't know which is worse. But, but wh where does he fit in? Were, were you, That's both the same. Though, well, yeah. to ignore is literally silence. To goad is to literally say, hey, Tom, well, it can be you know. can a goading thing. You yeah, know. Certainly. Of course. Yeah. I mean, there's all these kind of <sighs> secrets. But did you trust him and did it worry you that he doesn't know what an actor does? God, no, I was working with such a splendid group, that's it. You're suddenly aware that you're working uh, with this director and these actors, and you really feel honored and privileged that they're asking you to be a part of that and humbled by it. But it just improves your posture because you know you're going to be working with some other people. That means you're going to have to work better. You can't be complacent about this. You've got to bring your work out more. And that's always, uh, MASH was that. Was that I was just knew that thing was going to work. Uh, it's funny because Ridley took on a lot of, I don't want to use the word ego in, in a pejorative. There were a lot of egos around. Uh, did you sense that Ridley was the captain at all times? Oh, yeah. But producers talk very quietly. A, a creative person will not be so quiet. Yeah. When they're hearing something, they don't want to hear from a producer. Ridley was not quiet. When he heard something that he felt would be compromising the integrity of his intentions, but I kind of I got what he was getting at. What do you think his great Ridley's uh, Ridley Scott's greatest gift is as a filmmaker? What, what would you say is the most valuable for those of us who don't observe his process? We observe his films. We could say his vision. But what do you think Ridley does really well? He's a painter. He came from a uh, graphics artist. He was a graphic artist and a uh, very good one, actually. He did uh, wonderful. I wish I could have gotten my hands on it, but his, his, his scene, he drew all the scenes so you could have some idea what they were going to look like. I would love to have gotten that book because <laughs> it was really good caricatures, and he just drew them in pencil. You yeah. know? He'd go up and adjust the light because he'd look at the camera and he'd see how he wanted to fall over so the, the textures back there would be lit up just a little bit, a little bit. 
and then put some mist across that. It was one of the first films I ever was on oh. where they had the mist, so that you gave it's it even further film. depth, and it was explaining all of yeah. this stuff to me. Yeah. yeah. At that time, how big a risk was this film for you professionally, sci-fi films? Uh, I know Harry Dean Stanton said he had to really be convinced that this was going to be a horror film, not a sci-fi film. Were you worried about the sci-fi genre, which was a relatively... I didn't, I didn't see it as a the sci-fi film. I just never... What, what was your strategy? What was your way into the script? Especially after seeing The Duelist. There was yeah. no way in hell that was going to be a strictly a sci-fi thing. That was going to be an extraordinary experience, particularly with that cast. Yeah, yeah. Ridley, at that time that we started that film, was um, not, a, not an actor's director. Uh, the only time he really directed that I recall was after he did a take on us in the morning breakfast scene. We had made a condition with all the actors that we were going to have to direct ourselves. Yeah. We just knew that was going to happen. Yeah. He was operating the camera. He pulled his way from, from the camera and he said, interesting. <laughs> and that's the most direction we ever got. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us about the chestburster scene. Um, what, were the, what, were the, what did you know beforehand? What, what didn't you know? Well, I was mentoring with him. So with I mean, Ridley, you were kind yeah, of... Yeah, was, when I wasn't working, I was following him around. So I watched that thing being set up so I knew the, how they were going to do it. Right. And I saw, <laughs> God, I saw them bring in his buckets of cow guts and innards and blood pails of blood, the real thing. Into the room, I'm thinking, oh man, Ridley, come on, <laughs> calm down. Do you ever reminisce? I mean, you know, people like us love these films and don't let them go. Yeah. But you have to let them go, don't you, as an artist? You have to kind of clear your head, in a sense. Well, I do. I don't know. Every other, yeah, everybody does, works differently. Um, I have to go off and mow the lawn and do <laughs> real things, you know. And uh, I don't hang around the set very much. Um, I don't know where you get your, in, your creative input if you're continually talking about what was in the past yeah. or exchanging tales about, you know, uh, what are you doing now, who's your agent, when's your next job, uh, this kind of stuff that right. tends to go on in the community. I, don't, I just find that fairly boring. Are you going to see Prometheus? Well, I didn't even know they made it. <laughs> <laughs> this just did. What, is this, this isn't That's literally terrible. the first you're hearing of it, is it? Because well, we'll put this I online tonight if it is. <laughs> no, I knew he was going to do Prometheus, but I don't keep up with who's doing what. Okay. Let's put it that way. But now that we know, will you want to see it? If Ridley's made it, yes, I will. Definitely. Well, it's funny Anything that he or Tony Scott do. Anything that Bob Altman used to do, right. not that he always made a successful film, but there was always something, always something with great filmmakers. Every time you go to them to see a film they do, even at their worst, they're better than most. <laughs> and you get something as a filmmaker because that's basically what I feel I am. Ridley, as <coughs> early as yesterday, spoke about putting Harrison Ford in, uh, they're doing a sequel. This is news, maybe. They're doing a sequel of Blade Runner, and he's going to sneak Harrison Ford in there. Briefly, if, if Ridley ever called and I said, hey, Tom, let's do a, a Dallas moment, uh, would you do it? Absolutely. I hear, by the way, they're going to do a remake of Top Gun. Is that right? Is that right? 